Hello, everybody. Welcome to We'd Rather Be Reading. I'm Jerrica. And I'm Leah. But you guys know us now because we're famous on Twitter. Oh my god, so <laughs> famous. So famous. 550 followers. Yes, we are, uh, you know. And we're, we're, we're signing autographs now. We're especially famous because we have one listener in Africa. Oh my god, yes. Hi, Africa. Hi, Africa. We don't know who you are, but we love you. Thank you for listening. Yes. No, uh, we make a big joke about how we really just did this for ourselves. Of course. And honestly, with this uh, this whole... We had a goal for this podcast, and yeah. it was to get free books. And hmm. we have now reached our goals. So we just call it so, a day. Bye. So we're just going to quit now. <laughs> this is the last episode. No, I'm just joking. We're having way too much fun. Yeah. We cannot... Uh, quit quite yet but we did reach our goal of uh, free books so now keep sending free books to us because we're gonna gonna set new goals now yeah we would love to read anything fantasy ya na romance and throw us a couple like uh, oddballs in there too yeah Uh, i saw one that that sent us on twitter yesterday and was a thriller and it like looked freaky, like it looked like real scary. And I was like, "Oh my god, what if we Not read this?" Bit, scary. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to put my book in the in the freezer, like, like, like Joey. <laughs> no. So, what are you reading this week? What am I reading this week? Uh, uh, a Court of Silver Flames mm. is what I'm reading this week. Or I just started reading by Sarah J. Mass, yes. the Queen of the Court books. Yes, they're my favorite books that I've ever read ever of life. They're uh, not my favorite books, and <laughs> it's been a while since I read the other ones, and I honestly realized that I remember none of these characters. So it's been a bit of a struggle, these first few chapters of, who is she talking about? I don't know What's how that's even on? possible. I sleep with these characters. Like, they come up in my dreams, and I'm like, oh, hey, Reese, hey, Cassian. Like, what's up, Feyre? What should we do today? Like, I, they're my buds. Like, me and Moore go out shopping together in my dreams. Yeah, that's I'm more like that with the cruel prince here with the Holly. But that's what story happened because um, the Sarah these these books, the court books, they're I mean they're good, but I I <laughs> this, yeah, I like have uh, you immediate know, number one New York Times bestseller. But, but you know like, good. this world is full of idiots. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> this world is full of people with bad taste. No, uh, I I mean, obviously I'm still reading it, so I clearly I gotta like it. But I honestly it's been a, it's been a little bit of a struggle to understand what the frick's going on yeah. because but I, your memory we established last episode oh. is not the greatest anyways. But I remember when I first when we first started talking at the yoga studio about books, I told you, Oh my gosh, I reread the court books and you were like, Oh, let me give you some <laughs> other ones to read. <laughs> Get yourself let, better. let me get you started. <laughs> if you want to talk about fairies, you have to talk about Holly Black. You have then, to talk about Holly Black. And then I was like, oh, who's this Holly Black? And you're like, stop it. Now you need to read everything from Holly Black. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Leave the court everything. books aside. Um, yeah, but I, I can't. read everything from Holly I know. Black. I know you have. I have. And many times. I read like The Cruel Prince. That that trilogy I've read it many times. I think... Uh, I, I was I was almost tempted to listen to that instead of the, the court book here because I was like, I miss Carden and Jude <laughs> and I want to go back into that world. I'm gonna do I that don't. I don't. No, there, were, no. there were children. I like books where like the characters, even if they're young, are grown-ups. Yeah. So I really like these court books because they're all grown-ups. And we also read another grown-up book this week. We finished The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. We did, and, and I freaking loved it. And that was I was so girl. excited. Yeah. So excited. She is fierce and badass, and that main character is like, no one, no one <laughs> ever read about it before. <laughs> Alessandra, you are my hero in a way, but sometimes not because you're also Bitch. You're a bitch. We wouldn't be want, we wouldn't want to be friends with you, but we respect you. I don't know. She seems to be quite nice to her friends, though. Like, I just would really not want to be on the on the opposite That's end right. of her. You know. That's right. I would not want her as my enemy. No. No, I feel like she would kill me. <laughs> she probably would. She probably would. I mean, she has like a murder plan for almost everybody and everything. Yes. And I love how <laughs> throughout the book, whenever she like comes clean about her plan at the end, uh, the prince is like, yeah. Or the king, I should say. He's like, yeah, "Yeah, that sounds like you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plan to murder me. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like you. (laughs) You had a plan to kill me and take my kingdom. Yep, yep. That's not out of character. That sounds just like you. Yep. 
<laughs> but this week you're also reading the second Persephone book. Last last yes. pod episode you said, now I'm done with this. And I was like, <coughs> I read three more. <laughs> and Turns then, out I wasn't done. No. And I jumped into the second one. And then I spent the whole week writing to you, Jerrica, saying... <laughs> Why is she so stupid? Hmm. Why is she like this? I hate her. Hades can do so much better. Yeah. Why is she making this decision? Yeah. Does she have to piss everyone off? She's pissing me off. Yeah, that's pretty much my entire communication. And then I got them and I said, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you she gets extraordinarily uh, like bad decision making in that second book. She where is rude. He's She's like, listen, She's so I love like- you. He's like, listen, I love you for your safety and the better of all mankind. Don't do this. And she's like, okay. Turns she's like, around. I'm going to do it anyway. D- it. I'm going to promise you I'm not going to do it, but then I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> because clearly <laughs> I know better. I'm Wait, did he little... tell me not to do this? I'm going to do it anyway. Do it. <laughs> so she was a little yeah. bit ditzy in that second book, doing everything that she should not be doing. Mm-hmm. And that made it quite irritating to read because then he felt so bad for Hades and he's the king of the underworld, so he's not really like a dude that you should be like, oh man. <laughs> no, I mean, super rich, super powerful. Yeah. You shouldn't be like, oh, poor little rich man. <laughs> I'm so sorry for you. But I did. I felt genuinely sorry for Hades Ooh. listening to this book. Uh, but but not for the, the shadows between us because no. uh, could I as well, you know, I feel like he kind of knew what he was getting himself into, and and he he kept her at an arm's length. But I also liked, I very much liked that at every point in this book, she's like, "I'm not a virgin, and I'm not sorry for it." And he's like, "Oh, you shouldn't be." And he was just on board with all of these things. Like she's mm-hmm. like, "I want to do reform." He's like, "Great, let's do reform, yeah. not democracy, because pff, peasants." <laughs> the frick today, no, we need like, peasants, obviously. <laughs> she has no sympathy for anyone who's not rich like her. Like, no, no, none. Zero she's like, bro. how dare the maid? linger in one yeah. thing and I was like how dare they <laughs> how dare they stay in your room for even a moment more than they need to exactly <laughs> no she and the whole plot like the the other nobleman who was like dressing up like Robin Hood style stealing from the rich and giving to the poor and then she finds out it's him she's like but why why, why would he do this this is so dumb <laughs> giving to the poor she's just taking this for himself <laughs> like, yeah she was so uh, <laughs> So to recap <laughs> this book, if you guys didn't read it along with us, you missed out and you should read it. Even you though read this it. podcast is full of spoilers, this is a book we highly recommend because you will never find another MC like her. Oh my uh, goodness. She- and you will never find lines like this where he says to her, you are not so beautiful as to tempt me. You're perfect. A friend to keep the co- counsel off my back. And she's like, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I'm too beautiful. Like, what are you talking about? And she's so insulted by this. It's so funny. I am the most beautiful. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, but the, how the story goes is that there's a king, and uh, of course, the, it's time for him to wed or be courted by somebody. Uh, and he's a young king, he's like 19 or some yeah. teenage age. And uh, so this girl, Alessandra, has a plan. She's going to go in. She's going to fuck things up. She's going to be different from all the other girls. She's going to win the king's heart. They're going to get married. And everyone's going to think it's going to be bliss. And then she's going to murder that dude. <laughs> and take the kingdom. And because take the kingdom clearly she up. is the best at ruling those poor peasants and maids. <laughs> make sure they don't linger. Make sure they stay on task. So this is yeah. her plan. She's going to crack her whip. But then throughout the time, she makes some friends. She makes a couple of friends, and it's mostly uh, out of, you know, convenience for her. But they turn out to be pretty good friends, so that's good. And the king, he's, I mean, he takes her, he asks her to move into court, and then he proceeds to ignoring her. Yeah. <laughs> because he's really busy with, you know, running a kingdom, and he runs many kingdoms. It's like seven of them or something. And he like. wants to conquer the last two to be yeah. able to be the king of all kingdoms. Exactly. And I like how she's not like... No, we have enough. She's like, yeah, yeah, we should take care of Yeah, we should take them. Come on, come on. We need to rule them all. No, no, she's power hungry. That is for sure. She's got some serious leadership skills here. But so he's a shadow king, meaning that uh, he has a power where he can be a shadow or many shadows. Uh, well, he can turn his body into shadow form. form. Is so I that he, he is unkillable yeah. in shadow form. And there's many people and trying if, to kill him. If he's hurt uh, and he can turn back to shadow form, he will be healed. Healed so in shadow that's, form that's before good. he goes yeah. back. And he gets pretty much almost dead a couple times. Two, three times. Oh, yeah. 
And we find out about this, which is really funny, because we find out about this because uh, he's like, oh, let's... Uh, she gets pissy because he keeps ignoring her. Yeah. So she's like, you never spend time with me. And then he's like, fine, we'll go on this outing. And then they, they go on this outing and they're going uphill and she falls from her seat and she lands like literally in him. And he's like in shadow form. So she's like... <laughs> Oh, this is so weird. I'm surrounded by this shadow, and he's just like, "Is he not there? What's going on?" And and that and then we find out. And basically, this rule because you could not touch the king. You couldn't even walk within like five feet, I think, of him or mm. something like that. If anyone steps within like that boundary, they will be killed. Because if you touch the king, he cannot turn into shadow form when you're around. when you're around, and it's fifty, 50 yards, yards or something like that. Yeah. Mm. Um, so he's basically saying, I will court you, you will be my queen, or, you know, at least we'll pretend to be falling in love here, uh, but you can never touch me, because so I, I just need the council to think that I'm I'm doing this thing of, of courting and stuff. But So it'll be a relationship agreement, so that yeah. she could rule with him, is what she wanted, and he can have a queen, which is what his council wants. Uh, but they can never actually be intimate or physical or have, like, a real relationship. Exactly. And, you know, for Alessandra, this is not really in line with her plans because, obviously, she wants to kill him. And then on top of that... She, she loves sex. She <laughs> loves sex. And she's uh, she's also kind of... Uh, she's She likes the king. Like, she, she comes to like him and respect him and stuff. But then she, her plans... It's not just him and his shadow form that keeps thwarting her plans. It's also all of these other lovers that she's had before that all come Pop up. popping out of she's the like, workers. go, 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 go. <laughs> and they're like, I'm going to expose that you slept with me to the king. And she's like, oh, God, I'm going to deal with this shit. <laughs> and then it turns out when she tells the king that she's not a virgin and she slept with all these people, he's like, oh, good, good for you. But he says that he slept around too. Well, he slept with the... Uh, with, uh, um, prostitutes right and then yeah. and then he had to send them off to live in under countries so they would never be close to him because they obviously they touched him yeah, yeah. but he slept with a bunch of people so yeah he was he like, paid yeah, his yeah, way yeah, through fine. like a brothel kind of thing so he's like oh men and women should have the same same rights which is great progressive yeah. king here we like it <laughs> but there was we a very like big twist it. in this book yeah. which uh, in your prediction you said i don't predict a love triangle and i was like mm-hmm. But actually, there is a bit of, there a, love is a, bit yeah. of a love triangle yeah. in this story. I, say, I was a little bit wrong on that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a, there is a love triangle uh, with one of his uh, men at court that used to be a close friend of his, but he hasn't talked to in the last year. And this guy only showed up after. Well, all... He's there. He's there. He's, he showed up after... No, he was there when... After he, his brother died, I was going to say. Yeah. So he showed up like a, a while yeah. ago. Leandros, yeah. But uh, Leandros is the character's name. But he shows mm-hmm. up only after the the king's brother dies. Uh, so that makes him the king now. Uh, the prince, the king. Yeah. Because the other brother is the older brother. The well, brother it, we, we find out... Okay, <clears throat> to go back a little bit. We find out that the king, mm-hmm. all the people that live at court... A, apart from Alessandra, has more or less been forced to live there because they were all present when his parents were murdered. Yeah, they were murdered. So he's trying to figure out which one of his noble people yeah. out of his court actually killed the king, the old king and queen, his parents. But well, um, Leandros was there. Leandros was there, uh, and uh, the only one who wasn't there was Alessandra. Right. Because she's the new addition to the court. So and that's why he trusts her, because she wasn't yeah, there on that day. Yeah, because she wasn't there. So it's impossible that she killed the king and queen. But Leandris makes his move on Alessandra, tells her, I'm going to give you everything, mm-hmm. happiness, a crown, da da da, and uh, land and all this stuff, and we can live happily ever after. Meanwhile, the king is actually in the shadows listening to it all like a creepo, but he was pretty proud of her when but she says no. this is towards the end, because there's some other stuff that happens this before middle. that with uh, her, her, Alessandra's dad, which was one of my favorite characters, because he also, like all these other lovers, kept popping back up out of the woodwork <laughs> to like, just away. randomly <laughs> marry her off with all of these other suitors that is not the king. And she keeps saying, I will marry the king. I cannot get a better title. He's like... Tch. I will marry you to this duke or to this viscount, <laughs> to this, you know, yeah. like someone who's like way lower rank than the king. And he's like, he's like you can't do better. I'll what? marry you to a viscount. And he's like, and she's like I'll get the king. And they were like, no. he's like, no, no, no. One day everyone's going to find out how slutty you are. So we <laughs> yeah. need to marry off before that news comes out. Yes. Uh, and it turns out she kills, she killed her very first boyfriend. But we know that because that's in the first chapter of this yep. book. Um, 
But then when the king finds out about this, <laughs> he laughs and he's like, this is great. This saves me from having to kill him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I now know what kind of person you are. I love this. So he's like, you're pardoned. I'm on board with this shit. It's great. <laughs> and so then, they, they're both a little bit evil. <laughs> for sure. Uh, and then Leandros, he's like, he's trying to get in there. He, he, he kind of wants to get with Alessandro. So he's like invites her because the king is busy i mean it's it's hard work running all of these kingdoms so mm-hmm. he's busy he doesn't have time for her he doesn't go to places with her and stuff so leandros gets her to go out with him one evening and then he makes her put on like these peasant clothes and they take her to a boxing ma- match mm-hmm. and she gets really drunk but she figures out like this this professional fighting ladies take and she's like i can beat her and then she goes in there turns out she cannot <laughs> she, she gets she 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 loses it spectacularly which is also very funny but it's it's a very good example of a kind of person alessandra is like she's much too impressed by her own ability like yeah. she the ego she, is there <laughs> oh she she thinks she's the absolute best and, and she's quite an awful person i mean i root yeah. for her but she yeah, is yeah, yeah. quite an awful person no she's evil but we like yeah. her <laughs> uh, so then oh yeah and when when Calias finds out that that she murdered her first lover he's just laughing and she's like did i break him <laughs> yeah <and> something happened. <laughs> did, did i break him why is he laughing at me um, but yeah, so there's a twist towards the end. Calias yes. has overheard that Leandros is making the move here on Alessandra. He's not too pleased about it. No. He gets drunk and then yeah. he tries to touch Alessandra. She's like, what are you doing? You yeah. can't touch me. We are, yeah. you know. Um, and then there's this other plot. There's, uh, they have to go to, she gets like a letter sent to her and they have to go to this, uh, uh, brothel, brothel place so Alessandra has to dress up as a as a lady of the night mm. and uh, Hikolaius is there and he's also in uh, in disguise and it turns out he looks a lot like Leandros when he's in disguise Mm-mm. and then someone touches the king mm. a child or some young person it's one of the we don't find out that right away but uh, it's one of the serving staff and then at uh, this big ball that Alessandro has been planning which is like where he he put out a uh, like a throne for her and stuff like that, and yeah. like, it's, it's kind of a big thing. He's gonna announce to everyone that they're actually gonna get married, and she's gonna become the queen. And then this little this little child, this serving girl, is there, mm. and then they try to kill the king, and it's twist. But there's a time. lot of uh, plots to kill the king, like over yeah. and over. Like his life is in danger the entire book, yeah. uh, and there's many people done. trying to kill him, and then they find like a few and they kill a few and mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, but then at the end, there's that big twist that comes, and we find out that part of a person on his council uh, yeah. was the one part of the plot to kill him and the plot to murder the parents. Yeah, and then it turns out that Leandros actually touched the king, or he tried to touch the king. Mm-hmm. So she, and, but then, and then Leandros turns out that he is, but not yet, because first yeah. she gets sent away. Yeah. Alessandra gets sent away. There's, like, this really big fight that happens. Um, and is it that she gets accused? No, she's not. No, because she's it's pardoned for the murder. The ball. And then she, she goes runs away. away with this girl. And then she comes back. And they're in the room. And he's all like, thank you for saving my life. I trust you so much. And... Uh, and but then she- he... That's when he decides they want to be together for reals, Right. Because then they're actually, he touches her and they... They have sex. They have sex. Or well, they don't have sex. They have sex the morning after. And then mm. she's all happy and she's like, I'm going to be queen. Finally got to see some section action. And then she gets brought back because he's moving. He wants to move her stuff into her room. That's what happens. That's he wants to move her stuff into his the room so they have one yeah. room together. And then he finds this poison because she's like, she had a plan. She was a girl with a plan, you know, she's going to kill him. <laughs> So she, she, you know, prepared with poison and stuff, but then she never used it. And then the, the uh, like, the serving staff finds, like, the maids find yeah. the, the poison. And they and shows it to, it to the king. And, and then, then he freaks out and he sends her away. And then it turns out that it was actually Leandros all along who was trying to kill him because Leandros is his brother. Brother, the oh dead brother God, twist, twist, twist. twist. Uh, I guess I did not see the dead brother twist but, coming. Okay. I thought Leandros was going to be be involved. Because but when she friend. when she gets sent away for having the poison vial, he's yeah. like, "Oh, you're trying to kill me," and she's like, "Well, yeah, that was the plan all along." And he's yeah. like, "Yeah, that sounds like you." Yeah. And then he's like, uh, "But still, I can never trust you again. See it later." Mm-hmm. So she gets sent away. But when she's going to her room to pack things up, she sees Leandros and they make up. 
Yeah, and they kiss. They kiss, and she and has she her touches hair. Her, his hair and in her his hair dye. Yeah, and his hair dye goes onto her finger, and when she gets into the carriage and goes away, she sees the hair dye, and she's like, oh, puts all the pieces together, and she's and like, she rushes back. that's why they look alike. Oh, my God, he's the brother. So she yeah. rushes back, blows up the whole scheme, uh, and uh, then they live happily ever after. No, and then <laughs> he, he, she still gets sent away, and then he comes and gets her. That's like a month later. <laughs> that's and she's like, ah. I actually fell in love with the king and, and he doesn't love me. Yeah, yeah. It's a great book. I honestly, I really liked it. It was a quick read. It was yeah. refreshing. It was nice to have not just, a, you know, I will give up everything and follow you into whatever plan you have. Mm-hmm. My, my king, my prince, you know, it was like, I'm going to rule. And every one of her ideas, like, and he was actually a good king too. Like, he listened to her. Even though some of her ideas are a bit, you know, vicious towards the peasants and stuff, but you know, whatever, he was on board with that. So you know, I think they they um, it was it's a good story for that. It was uh, progressive in that she, there was no section education going on. No, no, because she knew she, she knew, knew all of this. She knew it all, <laughs> but she. Um... This book is a one-off, we should say, and yes. uh, so there is not another uh, continuation of the story. No, uh, but it's refreshing because there's a, quite often that books then go into two part, three part, four part mm-hmm. series. But this like ties it up in a really nice twisty bow at the yes. end of the book, uh, and we enjoyed it a lot. So if you haven't read it yet, read it now, pick it up. Uh, the it's Shadows called The Shadows Between, Between Us, Us by Trisha Levenseller. We really liked it. Highly recommend. So, moving on yeah. to our first gifted book. What? We did we get gifted a so book? so excited. What? Yes, we did. <laughs> we are so famous, you guys. So famous. Anyways, this book is called The Unlife of William Moore, and it's by Dana Lockhart. Mm-hmm. And uh, since it's our first gifted book and we reached our goal, so you now know that this is a lost podcast. No, it is not. <laughs> no. I'm going to stop saying It's not the last that. podcast. No. It's, it's the first of many of gifted book podcasts. And we have to say we're not going to have every gifted book on our podcast. No. Only with the ones that we feel are suited for it. Yes. Uh, and the reason why we picked this one up was because when she reached out to us, uh, she said that this is a vampire book without tropes, and I was like, oh, Leah, you got to check this one out. <laughs> How okay, can we no. have a vampire romance story without tropes? Is this even a possibility? I am still a bit skeptical. You know, we read the first three chapters. We'll <laughs> see what true. happens. That's we'll true. see what happens. Um, so this book here is about this girl, uh, and she's not feeling well. No, she's, she's sick. tired, she's weak, she's got a, like a crick in her neck, and she's suffering from nightmares. Mm-hmm. Um, so she consults doctors, and, and they figure out that what's wrong with her is that she has uh, low blood content. Low, mm-hmm. like She's missing blood, basically. Yeah. And they were like, well, where the frick is this blood going? Uh, so they do like a thorough checkup on her, and they can't find any internal bleeding. She's not bleeding anywhere from her body. She has no injuries or anything no. like that. So they're not really quite sure why, but our girl here, she has, um, she, she has an idea. She reads books. She reads a she lot reads. of books. She's a reader, and I love all of the, <laughs> the des- <laughs> all of that that comes up too. Where her friend is like, "You read so many books, you're gonna get absorbed in a book one day." And she's like, "I'm good with that." <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Man. <laughs> me too. Me I, into I thought these about books. us, and I was like, "Okay, yeah." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go and meet Calais and Alessandra mm-hmm. and Cardin and Jude. Uh, and Race. Oh, uh, no, Cardin and Jude. Cardin and Jude. I want to meet Tamlin and be like, listen, I can fix you. <laughs> He's too blonde. Like, he <gasps> but I'm not talking. Okay. But this thing you like hair. <laughs> <laughs> I love a blonde boy. I love a salt and pepper haired boy. I love a dirty blonde, a little brownish blonde, even when it goes a little long. Do you know what else I like? Silver hair. Like Vampire <laughs> <laughs> hair in there. Vampire the hair. There he is. Or Des, Des, Des. Yeah, or Des. This Des. is the Bargainer series by Laura Talassa, and we gotta oh. say, he is amazing, but he has. I see him with inky black hair. He in my has mind. silver hair. No, in don't take away his hair. He's very got silver. Inky black hair. Okay. We're all good. So <laughs> she has this idea because of all of her reading. So she thinks that uh, maybe these nightmares that she's been experiencing are not actual nightmares. And maybe there's more to them than, than you know, just nightmares. Because mm-hmm. uh, she keeps 
seeing this person shrouded in shadows, which is clearly a theme here with the shadows. Yeah, we did two shadow books this week. Yeah, the shadow books. Um, And uh, she believes that uh, he might be, this person might be a vampire. Because he needs blood, because where else is her blood going? So she writes exactly. a little note. <laughs> so she she she's like she's gonna she's gonna figure this out. She writes a note, a post-it note, and she leaves it in her hand. Yeah. And she goes to sleep, <laughs> and then she gets woken up, and this is person <laughs> there, and he 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 is a vampire. Yeah. Um, He's like, oh, you and ha- yeah, you, you know. <laughs> yeah. And he won't let her see his face. No. Um. Until he's had some blood, he's like, "I am hungry. Give yeah. me food first, and then I'll let you look at me. Like, so, you know, feed he... me first, and then you get to see me." My guess is because he looks like rabbit, you know, like yeah. that he needs to eat, and he's got like the blood veins going through the face and things like that. Probably. That's how I see it. As. It's probably something like that. He's he he's... he doesn't want to scare her too much. Yeah. But still, she's a little bit scared. And then he's like going for a neck, and she's like. <laughs> Not yeah. sure about this anymore, so no. he drinks from her wrist. Yep. And then after he's had his uh, his uh, his lunch, <laughs> <laughs> he's fine with turning the lights back on and letting her see him. And he is a vampire. He's not a very special vampire, though. He's a very, very average looking. He's and, a normal uh, dude. Yeah, it's called and William he's, Moore. And he's even a couple years younger than her yep. in his looks, which is refreshing because <laughs> the recent book we read, he was a million, a million years older than yeah, her. No, for sure. <laughs> um, his voice, he's got a special voice, though. That's it's sexy. Like melodic, that, I look forward kind of to stuff, the audio book yeah. of this, where I get to hear that like sensual... And it's not until we meet William here that we find out what our main girl's name is. Her name is Kayla. Yeah. Um, Because he's figured it out very well because she left her name on her school assignment. Uh, And um, they talk a little bit, not a lot, and then she's lost a whole bunch of blood here, so she falls asleep. Mm. And he's like, I will see you in seven nights. Don't leave your lights on. But she agrees. She agrees to be his, like, food bag. And so once a week he's going to feed from her. Mm -hmm. And once a week then she can uh, ask him extra questions. Yeah. So she's quite excited here about him coming back there in a week. I'm not sure how I feel about this personally. Like, if if I was to find out that I'm being eaten by a vampire, I probably wouldn't be like, yeah, sure, you can come back. I'd probably be like, leave all the lights on. (laughs) I would be totally fine with it. I'd be like, okay, this is our agreement. You have to heal me, and obviously I need to continue to replenish my blood supply. But I have a little bit of a continuity issue here, which I never, ever, ever have. And that's why I And I miss you, it. Do you what feel, is this? Do you feel honored? It's I because... <laughs> I can't believe I missed it. No, it's not that you missed it. It's I'm just so that proud of I... you for discovering continuity issues. It's not really. It's not really an issue, issue. It's just that I give blood every 57 days. And know that I cannot actually give blood any time earlier than that because my blood wouldn't be replenished. And that is a liter of blood. So if he is drinking, he can only pretty much have like a cup. But she loses count of how many gulps he has when he's drinking from her, even from her wrist, which we know how fast the blood pools there. Mm -hmm. So I'm only thinking about it from a giving blood perspective. But it's that hard actually, to drink a solid liter, though, in one gulp. Like, if you think about drinking... Not a drink in a gulp, but I'm like, she loses count of how many yeah. gulps, so I'm like, okay. Like, so maybe let's say that he's had half a liter from her body. Yeah. And then she, he comes back next week. You know what's going to happen to this girl? She's going to wither the fuck away. Because... Fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. Because I'm just so thinking... So it can't be once a week if we're talking about real-life human blood no, but and maybe how it's... much you could replenish in a week. No, but I'm thinking also it's really hard to drink a liter in one sitting. Like, this is one of my <laughs> things here with, with, with vampires in general. Like, it is hard as to drink that much. Like, you try to, like, gulp down a liter of anything yeah. in one sitting and you're like, after... Max half a liter, you're like, whoa, feeling quite stuffed here. That's true. And also, uh, in this other book I was reading by Jay Christ of the Never Nights, there's mm. actually, uh, they have this guy, he's referred to as the speaker, he's, he does blood magic. And uh, in the Never Night books, every kind of time you have a, a power, you also have like... Um, like, there's, a, there's an issue with it. So, like, mm. the main girl, she can shroud herself in shadows, but then she can't see through them. So she's practically blind when she does it. Oh, shit. And, and there's the speaker, and he can do blood magic, and he can only drink blood to sustain himself. But blood is emetic, so it means that if you drink too much, you will throw up. So he can only have a little bit, otherwise he's going to be sick. Mm. But he's not a vampire. 
No, he's, he's but a they're, they're magical easy creature. Blood for sustenance. So I'm thinking like they don't drink the way but that it's also a human being drinks. It, no, but if you drink too much blood, you will make yourself sick. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it's just, it's just that it's like you cannot drink too much blood because it's it makes you sick. I, and I think it's, it's more that, like, it's not this book, it's no. vampire books in general. It's like, when someone drains, and how many how many liters of blood do we have in our body? I don't know. You give blood, you should know. I, I, don't, I didn't ask them how much I have left now. <laughs> what? I no. Do I only have 300? No. Uh, but I mean, you have a, a few liters of blood in your body. I'm just saying. Fear, sure. Yeah, but you yeah. have a few yeah, liters yeah, yeah. of blood in your body. And you think about all these vampire stories where they like they grab the girl and they drink her and they drain her. And I'm like, how, That's how so stuffed exhausting. are you going to be? <laughs> like, you look at all like these vampire diary stories and stuff like that where he goes from one person to the next and he just drains them and throws them on a pile kind of thing. Like, how That's true. very freaking... Like, where does it fit in your body if you take, every, like, somebody else's entire yeah. blood continence and then put it in your body? Yeah. How is that possible? I'm just saying. This, this is, I have issues with this. It, but but in this more. book, they didn't actually mention how much no. that he's drinking he, he from takes, her. He takes I was just enough. saying, once a week is probably a little too close. Maybe it's, like, it, maybe it's just like He's a, only a taking, like, loss, a sip. That's true. Know, like, That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. We're gonna assume it's like a regular loss. Of okay, blood. I dropped my continuity, but it made me think no, no, about it's still good. It's once still good. I like it. giving blood. Okay. I, I like it. I like it. It's my baby steps to continuity. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, you do great. I'm proud of you. So he comes back, and she's well. She spent these seven days then reading about vampires and figuring everything out, finding out that most of the stuff that's written about vampires is actually like uh, Twilight stories and whatnot, uh, which are not very useful for lore, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then he comes back, and again, he won't let her see him before uh, he drinks, and this time he drinks from her neck. Hurts. Hurts when he bites her. But that's a little more sensual, right? Yeah. Like, now it's not the wrist, now it's moving up towards the neck. Exactly. And then he answers some questions, turns out he's um, born in in the late 1800s, I guess, no, in the early 1900s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's been, uh, he's been a vampire for 70-something odd years. Mm. Uh, and then... Um, Kayla here decides to call him Billy, and this is where I lost my book, man. Because what the frick, America? What is wrong with your nicknames? I am sorry, I love but nicknames. if you have someone called William, they should clearly be Will and not Bill. What the frick is wrong with oh. that? If you have someone called Richard, where do you get Dick from? No, that's it's actually not bad. in there. It's not in the name at all. And the John Jack debacle James. thing. Yeah, yeah, and and Bob. Yeah. And Chuck for Charles. Like Robert <laughs> You're so Bob aggressive and right Chuck now. for Charles. No. Enough. Robert enough. <laughs> I am saying enough. <laughs> I think it's endearing. I like it. But, I like uh, nicknames, but they need but to make William, sense. William make, definitely makes them sound older, like an older man, like he was born uh, at the time he was born. Mm-hmm. And she's just trying to modernize him a little bit by calling him Billy. Like Billie Eilish is really Couldn't popular. Have called him Willie? Willie! Yes! <laughs> no, good lord. Actually, that's a Swedish thing here. If your name is William here, everyone calls you Willie, but pronounced Swedish is Ville. So it's not as uh, weird. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. So that's, that's what happens in the first three chapters. I'm really not sure what the frick's going to happen in this book. I, I'm having a hard time predicting It's unpredictable. It is unpredictable. Well, how refreshing. I mean, Kayla is quite quick on accepting Billy and the whole vampire things. She lets him drink her blood, even though he told her early on. And he tells her but that. He, he tells like her he that he's going to stop. Yeah. If and when it gets unhealthy for him. So I guess that's nice. It's a like, kind vampire thing. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, and honestly, Kayla doesn't really seem to have any friends. Like, she has no friends mentioned in the first chapters of this book. Like, she has no... No, she seems very lonely. But she's so maybe hanging, she out. Just she's hanging needs, out with people. Maybe she just needs a friend. Yeah. Um, and also, her landlady has a door into her bedroom, which I am assuming is going to be used. Because right. it's being described, so I'm just guessing this door is going to be used at some point. But I am predicting a love story of sorts. I'm thinking friendship turning into love yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and I also, there, there's a mention somewhere in the book about Billy meeting other, like knowing of other vampires. And he doesn't seem too keen on these other vampires. So I'm thinking that one of them that's maybe not as nice as Billy will show up and try to mess with Kayla or something like that and this he will then need to save her and then obviously I predicted both will die in the end 
The end. <laughs> both will die in the end. They both yeah. die in the end. Yeah. I think that if I was going to predict this book based on vampire tropes, mm -hmm. I would say that uh, she falls in love with him and she, she finds this like whole new vampire community, but they're battling something and it's probably something having to do with not being able to drink human blood and she's like a special person because she, they could drink her blood and now he needs to protect her mm -hmm. so that not all the other vampires try to get at her because she's a special blood letter. And then uh, he convinces her to turn into a vampire and they move over away to Europe and live a happy long life together and, and somehow she has a baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's the trope. Of course, trope. vampire babies. That's the trope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. the trope version. But since this one doesn't have any tropes in it, I'm going to say that similar to yours, I predict love. But I predict love in a totally different way. I don't think they're going to try to be vampires and not be vampires together in this book. Uh, I think he's just going to be a vampire. She's going to be able to to feed him when he needs to feed. But like you said, I think there's going to be other vampires that come into play. But I hope that it's just that they get to live within society uh, since he's been feeding from people, but as a shadow, mm -hmm. so that they don't see him. Uh, this has been keeping up the society of vampires so that they could happily live together with the humans. So I'm going to say that this is a love story and not too much more of like twisty uh, world turning stuff. Fair enough, fair enough. So more of a quiet love story. And we yeah. forgot here to, to judge the book by its cover. We didn't forget. It is well, the best part. It's happening right now. Fair enough. But we usually do it first. So that's why I said we forgot. Last time we, <laughs> last time we did the last day. Uh, that's because I have the memory of a Swiss cheese. Uh, <laughs> anyways, <clears throat> so the book is Down Life of William Moore. And the cover is a, a silhouette of a, a boy sitting in a corner in front of some mountains. And there's some trees and some... some uh, it's the night moon. because it's dark and moody. Yeah. And and I mean, just by this cover, I'm just going to assume it's about someone who's severely depressed. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a di yeah, okay, I see he's got like the elbow and the knee and the mm -hmm. he hand and the head kind of thing like that he is contemplative. Uh, I definitely saw this and I was like, oh, someone's going to die because mm -hmm. it's like really moody looking. And I think maybe it's the way that the... Uh, the lettering is yep. that it looks like graveyardy, deady kind of storytelling. Mm -hmm. So if I were to look at this, I would say that the story is about the undead. The undead. Yeah, okay. So I'm going with depressed and you're going with undead. I think you're going to be right because, well, we already did the first three <laughs> chapters. But, you know... Maybe, but maybe not. Who Dana, thank know. you so much for this book. We're enjoying it we already, enjoying and it. we can't wait to finish reading it. You guys all read along with us. It is The Unlife of William Moore by Dana Lockhart. Uh, next week, we're going to be recapping it uh, and moving on to our next newest book of the week. Yes. We look forward to that. Have an awesome week, everybody. See you later. I'm Jerrica. I'm Leah. Bye. Bye. We'd Rather Be Reading is an original podcast by Jerrica Ceron and Leah Sanfer. The music for The Penguins, written and performed by David Allred from the album The Transition, courtesy of Erased Tapes. Please check him out on Spotify and check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at We'd Rather Be Reading and, and Twitter at We'd Rather Read. You can also email us at We'd Rather Be Reading the Pod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.